want AI to do my laundry and dishes so that I can do art. This was a deleted Reddit post, and the comments were pretty controversial. YouTubers on the Chuckle Sandwich podcast have purposes. How long will it be until we see Gemini links in the sources of video essays? People are already joking about how bad Google Gemini is. Do people know how bad it really is for the YouTube ecosystem and creativity in general? think of that intro did that make you feel gross did that make you feel like i was taking advantage of people's talent by using ai well you would be right i mostly did that intro to kind of prove the point that uh you shouldn't replace people with ai <laughs> as much as i dislike ai i must admit to play devil's advocate here there has to be some use for it right especially a use that doesn't you know take people's jobs away because that's kind of you know the main concern of ai that or terminator becomes a documentary ai started in the 1960s with lead scientist alan turing oh great so it's all his fault there are already articles exclaiming how people shouldn't resurrect alan with ai which is the most hilarious form of irony i have ever seen but see Alan was trying to invent a thinking machine, not a device to clone somebody else's voice for financial gain. So we know that there was a shift with AI somewhere that muddied the potential of it actually being a helpful tool instead of being known for plagiarization, I think that's a word, all because simple, aka lazy, is better. The imitation game is heavily dramatized. The core of the story is basically true. The imitation game is only loosely inspired by the book as its plot strays quite far from the true story. The imitation game was largely based on the biography Alan Turing, The Enigma. Man, everyone is saying something different about the movie about the guy who invented AI. I wish there was a tool that could summarize everything so I don't have to do the hard work. Oh, right. So that's why people use the it. The only thing that I will give Gemini credit for is literally listing what sources you're pulling from, which is more than what some YouTubers do. But that's the thing. It would be so easy to compare a YouTuber's list of sources to Gemini, especially if it's, let's say, a video essay to see if they actually used AI for their research, especially if those are the only sources in the description if you're doing any amount of research for your videos cite your sources guys however in order to provide examples of why gemini is bad i obviously had to use gemini a thing i wouldn't normally do so because i've gotten my point across with the actual feature itself it's time to disable it all i have to do is search google plugins go to the chrome web store search bye bye google ai and add it to chrome now when you load up the search you can see it actively trying to fight the plugin it's wonderful yes you could just get a new browser, which if you're able to, absolutely, go for it. But when you're like me, and you have several accounts for work that have two-factor authentication, switching to another browser isn't that easy. Now, in order to understand what artificial intelligence actually is, we must ask the question, are there different forms of AI? Because when I think of AI, there are various aspects that I immediately think of. There is AI in video games, also known as bots, also known as CPUs. There is Turing's original intention of a thinking machine. There are AI voices used in the most brain-dead memes imaginable. Like, surely we use the term AI way too loosely. And way too much, right? Well, when I started to research this, I found three, and then seven, and then 10, and then 12, and then 13. And at this point, I noticed that the number seven was the one to appear the most for some reason. And sure enough, my assessment that there are different forms of AI had proven correct. Narrow AI. AI designed to complete a very specific action, unable to independently learn. So basically a Roomba. Artificial general intelligence. AI designed to learn, think, and perform at similar levels to humans. Since thinking is a human thing, it would be safe to assume that this version of AI is what Turing intended. But hey, why assume when we can just ask a dead man, right? Artificial superintelligence. AI able to surpass the knowledge and capabilities of humans. This is the scary one. The Terminators, the ex machinas of the world. We need less of this, methinks. Reactive machine AI. 
AI capable of responding to external stimuli in real time, unable to build memory or store information for future. Sniper Wolf. Limited Memory AI. AI that can store knowledge and use it to learn and train for future tasks. Shouldn't this one be the standard? Like, AI doesn't need to do everything. Except it would be nice if AI did my laundry and dishes. That would be really nice, right? Theory of Mind AI. AI that can sense and respond to human emotions, plus perform the tasks of limited memory machines. I'm not gonna lie, this one creeps me out. Because it's very obvious that human emotion can be used for manipulation. So that's a road that I really don't think we should go down. Self-aware AI. AI that can recognize others' emotions, plus has a sense of self and human level intelligence. The final stage of AI. Let me ask you a serious question. Do we really need this? See, I'm in the AI camp of, yes, use it in technology. However, it doesn't need to be sentient, and it should only be used for limited tasks, like a Roomba. It doesn't need to learn everything and be a metal human. And that's the thing I don't think people truly realize is that there are different levels to AI. Low-level AI, like a CPU in a video game, good. High-level AI to replace human actors, Bad. If it can know how to take advantage of humans, that would be a bit of an issue as the human race. AI shouldn't take jobs away. It should improve the jobs we already have. All right, so what about those comments on that deleted Reddit post? Well, first of all, people confused robotics with AI, some even thinking that there won't be a difference in the next decade, some saying we already have these machines. However, there was someone who wrote a paragraph, confused at the initial statement, and gave some actual genuine criticism that honestly, I think is worth sharing. They state that AI is already cleaning for them, that art and writing is cheaper for AI than building a robot. Whenever AI replaces the use for cleaning, then people who literally clean for a job won't have that job anymore that AI can be a help instead of a replacement, and then ends it with a statement about what is the appropriate use of AI in art and work. Quote, I think people that see AI as competition often, not always, are just concerned that a certain domain becomes more accessible to everyone, a domain where they used to excel. So in a way it's driven by fear that others or a machine can do what they used to be much better at understandable since they invested that time to get to that level besides that yes please ai go do my dishes slash laundry slash cleaning the other side to all of this talk of ai is the fact that there is a human side to this obviously i as a human don't want robots or ai to be smarter than me because then we as a society become replaceable however if we can keep ai to a limited use and only use it for certain tasks as long as it's positive and you know doesn't steal from or plagiarize others then personally since we can't just get rid of ai at this point we can do our best to either not use it the path that i'm choosing or, as another comment said, it will become increasingly difficult to find human content in a digital world where AI thrives. And this exact sentiment is why the video game industry has now gone on strike, and has been for weeks. To be 100% clear, I don't agree with using AI in a creative space. And these people who are striking also agree. Replacing human actors with AI is taking away those jobs in the industry. This is why last year there was a strike for months to cut a deal so that AI is not used in TV and film. Now they are focusing on video games. But something is different. Here is a quote that I found that generally sums up this whole debacle and is genuinely worth reading. Companies are trying to get around paying the body movement performers the same rate as others, because essentially at that point, they just consider us data. That is the most dystopian thing I have ever read. The good news, however, is that SAG-AFTRA still encourages you to support game development during the strike, even though there might be some delays for certain game companies involved in the strike. Now, since the focus is mostly on 10 big studios, surely this doesn't carry over to the indie game space, right? Well, I mean, essentially, no. 
However, if AAA games are allowed to use AI, you know that eventually it will start to trickle down into the indie game space. So setting a precedent that AI should not be allowed in game development to replace humans is a good idea. So since the strike encourages people to still play games, can I actually make my own game, especially without AI? I took an afternoon to plan what my game should be and figured out what genre I wanted to go for. Once I storyboarded it out, now comes the hard part making the actual game. I'm going for a minimalistic style to try to ease production so that way I don't stress myself out too much, but we'll see what happens. This will also hopefully mean that it won't be too hard drive and CPU heavy, so hopefully older computers will actually be able to run this game. This is where more research is needed because, well, I don't know how to make a game. Most people recommended RenPy, so let's start there. Once I downloaded it and launched the engine, I noticed that there was a tutorial, so I checked it out, and man, this is extremely detailed. However, I'll be honest, reading is hard, so instead I looked up some video tutorials, which is how I learn best. Day one was focused on the storyboard, understanding RenPy, and I made my first draft of art. I've never coded before in my life, so this is going to be a learning curve. Let's hope it actually works, unlike that FrameMaker engine. Eventually, after about an hour, I was able to change it to my custom character. I also had one of those light bulb moments where all this code actually started to click with me. Now, if I was making just a visual novel, this process would be simple, but I'm not making a visual novel. I'm making a choose your own adventure game with multiple endings. So I understand the script portion, even though now it's not working and there's three more coding screens I just discovered. So why wasn't the dialogue changing? I may have been editing the wrong script file, I guess. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, I just created the shortest game ever, which made me laugh. Next are the choices, and since I made my own dialogue tree, all I have to do is manually type every single one. Once I got two of the endings done, I realized that this is going to take a while. In the meantime, I customized the UI, leading to 234 lines of code later, and the backbone of the story and all the endings are done. After that, I made some variations of the character. Day two, I mean midnight, because turns out I have a new hobby that I actually really enjoy. On this day, I added all the new expressions, and then I made some music, and oh wow, how is it 2 a.m. already? The next day, or the same day, depending on your definition, I added sound and music to my game. I also then realized I wanted voice acting in my game, which I actually didn't get around to. Oops. Another realization was how deep of a rabbit hole game dev actually is because the more I add to my game, the more ideas I get to make the game better, like changing the font. I then discovered that you can have an actual working mini game in your own RenPy game, and that blew my mind. Now we have 500 lines of script code. At this point, I've done what is essentially the equivalent of a game jam, so I am finally putting the brakes on this game before I fall deeper into this rabbit hole. It took me about three days to make this simple little choose your own adventure narrative game. I wanted to put it on Steam, but apparently you need like $100 for that, which I did not know, so instead my game will go on itch.io if you're interested, and don't worry, it'll be a free game. But yeah, making a game, making something original by myself, really helped me realize that I genuinely love game dev. My only gripe is that I couldn't do everything that I wanted to do with this game because I was using a visual novel engine to attempt to make something more complicated. Popular consensus says that RenPy is the easiest game engine to work in, but it's also the most limited. I couldn't make one of the endings I had planned, so if I ever attempt to make a new game, it will be with a new engine. I'm glad I went through this experience, however, since it made me learn some of Python. At the end of the day, I wanted to make something artistic, and I did it. It's not the most glamorous thing, but I did do it. Art is an expression of humanity. AI is not human. If that's the case, then why are we tainting our creative expression with the use of AI in the first place?